You can't get represented. Um, we need a law in upstate where, and this comes back to the Black Panther Party, a jury, uh, uh, a jury pool of your, a jury of your peers. In my county, Onondaga, the towns, the juries are pulled from uh, the town when there's a, a case in the town. In the city, the jury is pulled from the whole county. So black people are getting uh, tried by white, mostly white juries in the city. Whereas in the towns, you know, white people getting tried by white juries. So, you know, that's another reform. Uh, we got a long list of things we got to do in the state. The criminal justice system is uh, a misnomer. It's, it's criminal injustice perpetrated by the state in so many respects. Okay. Uh, uh, my, Danny. my name is Ben. I'm like I'm a lifelong Upper Manhattan resident. Would you consider an investigation of the New York City Economic Development Corporation and these massive hyper gentrifying rezonings that they're funding throughout the city? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I come down here and, and I hear about the progressive, the Gladio administration, and then I talk to people, the working class is being driven out of Manhattan and out of much of Brooklyn. And affordable housing starts at an income of 50000 I mean, I'm from Syracuse, we're one of the 10 poorest cities in the country. Our median income is 35000 per household, which wouldn't even qualify. And that's because we got a bunch of professors and doctors in the you know, the hospitals and the university. The working class, you know, 25,000 is, you know, you're doing good. You know, we couldn't live in uh, Manhattan. So uh, the fact that uh, so-called affordable housing is getting subsidized by things like the Economic Development Corporation is scandalous. It may be just policy and not illegal, but I'll give you an example from Syracuse. You heard about core development. Their principals are going to prison for bid rigging in the Buffalo Billion and bribing Joe Percoco. Um, and then uh, there's a project called Kennedy, was called Kennedy Square. I had nine members of extended family living there. And it was one of these Section 8 project-based developments. And the developer let it run down after the tax break ran out. So this uh, urban, what is it called? The, the state version of uh, Urban Development Corporation, it used to be the UDC, Economic Empire Development Corporation, took, took over and they let it run down further. So it had to be torn down. So they gave it to SUNY Upstate Medical University who gave it to Core Development. No bids, no money down. That is now a weed strewn lot, that project's been torn down and right next to it are very luxury apartments for Syracuse, rents. These are for rich students, you know, started at 1400 a month, go up to 2500 a month. I don't know if that, that doesn't sound so outlandish here. In Syracuse, it's outlandish. And uh, so, yeah, I think that needs to be investigated. That, just that one project. And I, you know, I don't know the details down here, but I hear from the tenant groups, you know, uh, it, like community zoning, like the people in Chinatown, you know. It, you know, we were there at the, they're on a hunger strike, 85 hour, and they've got a community rezoning plan, and the city shut down their own plan from the top down. And I hear the same thing all over the city. And uh, so, if it's not illegal, it's wrong. All right, one more question. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask Howie about the idea that the only thing we have to look forward to are electoral politics of any party, and that how Howie uh, comes out of a movement, and it's a movement that's pushing you forward and pushing many of the green candidates forward. It's not as if people on the top are saying, let's put this person in, let's put that person in. Mm -hmm. you know, so, and that's a different way that politics works from the bottom up, so that our movements and what we do in the streets and in where we live are really important, and that you express and articulate the interests of the people in those movements and to give voice to, on a different level. It's not as if you're saying, so here's what we should do and what we shouldn't do. Thanks. Well, absolutely. Without independent candidates, movements get taken for granted. They can do all these big demos, look at the, the second world superpower leading up to the Iraq war, and without any more candidates that could threaten the Democrats and Republicans, they just roll off their backs. By the same token, politicians without movements keeping them honest and driving them forward are going to start looking out for their career and just to sell us out. So they got to go together. I've got time for two quick questions. Yeah, I, I'd like to ask you about the two bills I would like to see you uh, promise to uh, support. 
one of them, you know, in the next, in the next crash, everybody in New York will have their savings account wiped out because we have a bail-in, uh, which is part of federal statutes. If uh, New York had a state bank, the way you have in North Dakota, we could eliminate that possibility. Um, would you be in favor of the state bank for New York? Yes, another thing we've had on our uh, platform since the 98 campaign when we first got a dollar line. And uh, yeah, I, I've been talking a lot about that. Um, it's in tomorrow's news release. We're doing a, a news conference on City Hall steps. People are welcome to join us. What and uh, we're going to mention this Three. tonight. 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. City Hall steps. I think the next, the next bill is this. We have a federal statute, Section 18, I forget what it was. That makes it a federal crime to lie to any government agency or lie to Congress or lie to anybody who works for the government. We need, a, we need a statute, which you can act in New York, that makes it a crime, at least a state crime, for any elected uh, official, uh, government official or employee, to lie to the public or a member of the public with appropriate fines. Would you support that? Yeah, I, that sounds like a good idea. You don't want your policy. I mean, your officials, your bureaucracy, giving you the wrong scoop. And if they do, you should have a way to get that remedy. So, makes sense to me. I, I, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know what laws are out there, but uh, the principle, I agree with. Okay, we have time for one more question. First of all, I love your accent. I'm from Mississippi, and my great great grandfather fought in the. The Battle of Shadow on the Confederate Army, so <laughs> you sound like that. But I wanted to ask you, um, since the majority of African Americans are on the Democratic Party, what is your intentions to get us to come your way, to the Green Party? How, how will you recruit us or get us to vote your way? Well, this is up to all the Greens, and basically you've got to talk to the African Americans who are active on the issues be supportive, develop personal relationships. So there's trust built. Um, I, my perception, and I live in the most black community that I have done a lot of canvassing on, they have actually recruited me. Black Democratic Committee recruited me to run against the black Democrat incumbent because they knew what I was talking about and he wasn't getting the job done. And they didn't care if I was running on the green line. But that's because I've been in the community doing a lot of stuff, they knew me. And I think that's what the Green Party, you know, members and organizers have to do. Uh, so that uh, then the relationship. Now, you know, in, the, in my community, a lot of people are Democrats for two reasons. One is, if you're not a Democrat, you've got to explain yourself to other people in the community. You know, because they think you're, you must be a Republican then, and they're like the Klan. And that's the other thing. They vote defensively against the Republicans rather than positively for the Democrats. They're not so, they don't have a lot of confidence that Democrats are going to make things better, but they know the Republicans are going to make things worse. So we've got, to, and I think, so then the Greens have to be strong enough that we are a viable option for people who are right now voting defensively. But I think the main the thing, the first thing is that Green activists, whatever your color, have got to go to the communities that are most oppressed, most in need of change, and develop relationships, organize outside of the electoral arena, and then you can talk about electoral politics later, once they're, you know, are, there's a network where people trust each other and then they can move together. 